So, what is it all about, eh? This planet? Life? Humanity? Who actually runs this planet? Stock markets? Politicians? The media? CEOs of large companies? <laughs> nah. What about nature? What about David Attenborough? Life on Earth? Bear Grylls? I mean, after all, plants and animals are everywhere. My jacket is nice and warm. It's filled with down from birds. The cord in my hood is made from cotton and silk. Plants, silkworms. You see, I feel really nice and warm, insulated, an invention by animals that live in cold climates. Like those fellows down there, the sheep. My boots are waterproof. Now that is an invention by ducks. Keeps them nice and buoyant. Dry feathers. Ah, oh, rivers. Cold streams of water. They originate from melting snow and downpours of rain. They're like the veins on our planet, channeling one of the most important cycles on Earth. You see, good, healthy water originates from healthy catchments. Where do you think this stuff comes from? You really don't need to go into the pipe and find out. All you need to do is look up at the sky. Clouds dump rain and snow way up there, and it comes down via streams and rivers. Now some of this water goes into the ground, where we get our drinking water from. But you know, most of the water goes straight back out to sea, of course, where it forms clouds again. You see the cycle? So if the water in the streams and rivers is of bad quality, then the stuff that comes out of your tap will also be bad. But if the water is good, then everything downstream will be just fine. So as I said before, good, healthy rivers originate in good, healthy catchment. And those rivers are full of invertebrates, which feed the fishes, which are food for us. <laughs> Talking about food, if I sit here long enough, I'm going to be food for mosquitoes and sandflies. They'll be after my blood because they need the protein to lay their eggs. You know, people often ask me, Bugman, why can't we get rid of all the mosquitoes on the planet? Would make life so much easier. <laughs> True. But hang on. The larvae of those mosquitoes live in the water and they clean the water of bacterial soup. They're also food for little fishes, which are food for bigger fishes, which are food for the biggest fishes. So there's a whole ecological system going on there. And finally, those adult mosquitoes don't just eat blood. No, no, they also like pollen and nectar. And they get that from our wildflowers. And while they do that, they pollinate all these flowers in New Zealand. So, without mosquitoes, we would have bad water, bad drinking water. We would have hungry fish, even hungry geckos and birds, because they feed on mosquitoes as well. And finally, you might as well kiss goodbye to the beautiful wildflowers in New Zealand. Not a good idea, is it? Shows you, way eh? Everything is connected. We may even be connected to life on galaxies far, far away. Who knows? I suppose we could live with dirty water, hungry birds and geckos. But let's take a look at our honeybees. They're in big trouble worldwide. Each year, 30 to 40 percent of them die. The causes? Well, some people say cell phone towers, pesticides, exotic mites, predators on the bees' bodies, foreign diseases, and bad land use without flowering plants. We just don't get it, do we? Bees pollinate one-third of all our food crops, as well as the clover in our paddocks, which gives us nitrogen for the grass. Did you get that? Without bees, growing food and farming meat is a heck of a lot harder. Under my feet live millions of little creatures and fungi. Some live in fallen leaves, others in fallen branches. Others again tunnel through the soil and all they do is recycle. They reuse stuff that once lived and reduce the total amount of, well, waste on the planet. Heard that before? The three R's. 
Reduce, reuse, recycle. Mother Nature knows no waste. It has no landfills, no toxic residues. As soon as some waste is produced, a little creepy crawly comes along and gobbles it up and turns it into smaller and smaller and smaller fragments until they become so tiny that they can be used by the trees and the mosses and the plants as food again. So, when we talk about living in a throwaway society, I always ask the question, where is that magical place that we call away? What about recycling done? That's the hardcore bug work we don't even think about on a daily basis. Yet a great number of invertebrates and fungi do exactly that sort of work. Scientists have calculated that if there were no dung processing organisms on the planet, we'd be in the poo up to seven feet in three years. Think about that. Seven feet! <laughs> How will you get to work, to school, to the cinema? <laughs> and playing a game of footy would be very, very messy. Just think about it. There are creatures that distribute seeds, that pollinate flowers, get rid of rubbish. They even do a pest control for us. There are creatures that help other creatures in all sorts of ways, like a bus service or an airline. We know that every creature is eaten by a bigger creature. Some plants and animals provide us with brand new medicines, or even new technology and new materials. So, what is it all about then, huh? You see, it's not just nature that's running this planet, but the millions and millions of species that all interconnect and help each other and cooperate that make this world a well-oiled machine, a living ecosystem. We've got a word for that. Biodiversity. Bio biodiversity. 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 Bio. Bio. Biodiversity. Biodiversity. The diversity of life. Yep. The diversity of life. It literally makes the big picture. Provides us with balance and our well-being. And everything we do has an impact. But do we look after our biodiversity? Do we really value it? Or have we lost the operating system of planet Earth? <laughs>